RMS versus peak power. What the heck is the difference? Today, we find out. When it comes to speakers and amps in the car audio world, you're gonna hear terms about RMS power and peak power thrown out quite a bit by manufacturers. So what does this even mean? Well, RMS or root mean square is the average continuous amount of power that an amp can output or a speaker can handle before damage. And peak power is the absolute maximum amount of power that an amp can output or a speaker can handle before damage. So there you go, that's it. Uh, all right, just kidding. Let's get into some more detail. RMS power for speakers is also known as the maximum long-term power handling. Now, according to the International Standard of Organization, or ISO, because that makes sense, there are three ways to measure power. Nominal resilience. The speaker is tested for 100 hours. Continuous resilience, which is long-term, where the speaker is loaded at full power for one-minute periods, which is repeated 10 times with a break of two minutes between each period of stress. Finally, impulse resilience, which is short-term, where the speaker is loaded for one second, which is repeated 60 times with a break of 60 seconds between each period of stress. Power is always measured on the resistive load because a speaker cannot handle the full amount of power that an amp is going to produce. So the lower the resistive load, the more power we can get from an amp. This can simply be calculated from Joule's law. Once the RMS power is known, we can begin to estimate the peak power range. To establish the lowest range, we use this formula where peak power is the square root of 2 times the RMS power. Multiplying the RMS power by 2 will get you the highest possible range, and that is normally what peak power is advertised at. So with all this power, that means your music is going to sound better, right? Mm, well, not quite. While you can get away with turning your music up more, everything is going to have its limits and boundaries, and this is going to be called total harmonic distortion. The higher the RMS power in both the speakers and amp does mean you can get away with more, but everything does have its limit. Anything above 1% total harmonic distortion is going to be unpleasant to listen to. So let's do an experiment. So these balloons are going to represent the amps and this hose is going to represent the audio. Now the smaller balloon is going to be the factory amp and the larger balloon is going to be the aftermarket amp. Now clearly the smaller amp or the smaller balloon is not going to be able to hold as much or in this case be turned up as much before you get the distortion. Now amps or in this case these balloons are eventually going to reach a limit where when you turn them up or fill them up too much they will distort or pop. Now in extreme cases you could damage your speakers if they experience too much distortion. So let's start filling up the smaller amp first. We need to get the right nozzle for this, so. Okay, oh. We need to get the right nozzle for this. I don't think it's gonna pop. <laughs> Popped. And as you can see, that was clearly uh, whatever scientific rating that was, but let's go off to the aftermarket amp now. I forgot to bring a towel. This sucks. I don't want to get wet again. This is very scientific. My hands hurt. Never mind, it's getting the protrusion. Science. So as you can see, don't do that to your speakers or amp. So now that you know all about RMS and peak power, which is better? Well, uh, both and neither. So RMS and peak power are simply a mathematical correlation. More RMS means more peak, more peak means more RMS. The higher the number, the more you can get away with cranking up the volume with less chance of distortion. 
However, you're going to need a better speaker if you have a higher power rating amp. So, such as the balloon example, if you have a speaker with a higher power rating or a bigger balloon, it can handle more audio or more water before distorting or exploding. But to get the best experience possible, you're going to want to back it up with a proven, reputable amp, such as like, uh, yes, I have to say it, Alpha One by Beamer Tech. We can go into so much detail about our amps, but I just want to give you a quick rundown on the three that we currently offer, the Up 8, Up 10, and Lightwave. Each amp that we offer is for a different audio system, head unit, and model BMW. With these three plug-and-play amps, we cover the compatibility with about 97.4% of all BMWs and Minis. Here's a breakdown of the power specs. The UP8 has six outputs rated at 65 watts RMS or 130 watts peak at 4 ohms, and two outputs for woofers at 160 watts RMS and 320 watts peak at 2 ohms. The UP10 has eight outputs rated at 65 watts RMS or 130 watts peak at 4 ohms, and two outputs for woofers at 160 watts RMS and 320 watts peak at 2 ohms. The Lightwave has six outputs rated at 75 watts RMS or 150 watts peak at 4 ohms, two outputs at 150 watts RMS and 300 watts peak at 4 ohms, and one subwoofer channel rated at 250 watts RMS, 500 peak at 4 ohms, or 400 watts RMS, 800 peak at 2 ohms. While the Lightwave amp boasts 2300 watts peak power, it doesn't mean it's better than our other amps. Each amp that we offer replaces a specific factory BMW amp, so it won't be a fair comparison. What we can assure you though, is that each amp that we offer is going to be the absolute best amp for your BMW, and every single one of them will deliver more power than you'll ever need. And there you have it, a quick rundown on RMS versus peak power and how that applies to the best amps that you can get for your BMW. For more information on this topic, check out our article linked in the description, and there you can also find more information about our amps and our speakers that we offer for BMWs, Minis, and Supras. For more information, tips and tricks, and product reviews on BMWs, Minis, and Supras, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell. And hey, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok as well. Thanks for watching.